When finally up and running at its maximum, River Park and Pier was able to care for 30 clients at a time in their 28-day recovery program. But there was still an even greater need. In 1981, River Park added a second treatment center in Rapid City when space was found at St. Martin's Academy. Another expansion brought River Park to Sioux Falls in 1984. And as its scope of operations expanded, River Park continued to grow. Eight statewide community resource centers were added. Alumni were involved in many ways. They found space for modest offices, provided aftercare for the recovering alcoholic, and even counseling for family members. They found space for and encouraged AA meetings. Still others arranged for Al-Anon and Alateen support and the River Park Family Assistance Program. Early on in the development of our River Park treatment program, Glenn and his staff realized it was not complete. An almost equal effort toward a public awareness program was sorely needed. An agenda was set to create this material. It was, again, a groundbreaking effort. River Park's expanding understanding program was starting to reach people and make them aware of the devastating illness that is alcoholism as well as the destructiveness of chemical dependency. At this same time, Glenn had the opportunity to videotape interviews with people who were interested in the subject of alcoholism or chemical dependency. Many were recovering alcoholics. Others were people with a personal interest in the disease through afflicted friends or family members. Others simply wanted to lend their support to River Park. It was a rare opportunity for our expanding understanding concept, and once more, River Park was blessed. When it came time to do the recordings, two very special people came forward to help. At that time, Joe Floyd and Evans Nord headed KELO-TV in Sioux Falls, a major area television station. These two arranged for and provided the studio time, the personnel, and the entire KELO-TV facility to videotape those first interviews. With their help, River Park was able to conceive and produce our series of 30-minute TV programs titled, It's Great to be Alive. These programs featured interviews with many well-known people. They were stars from Hollywood and TV, sports figures, politicians, and business leaders. They came to us ready to tell their own very personal stories. Quite often, it was their own battle to recover from the illness of alcoholism. Others told of how they had been affected by the illness of family members, friends, or associates. And never once did any of them ask to be paid for their time or expenses. They all appeared for free. And they all helped River Park tell the story of this disease and the way to recovery. KELO-TV helped us to produce these programs. Then they put them on the air, many in prime time. After that, they provided videotape copies to other stations so an even greater number of people could see and hear these stories. As a result of the dedication of those two very special men at KELO, Joe Floyd and Evans Nord, River Park was able to bring a wonderful program of awareness and education to a wide area. It was a remarkable run, starting in 1976 and running through 1994, almost 20 years. The cost of producing and airing these 30-minute television programs ran into hundreds of thousands of dollars. But it was all provided to River Park and the people of South Dakota at no cost. There is no way River Park can truly thank KELO-TV. And how can we ever thank the other South Dakota TV stations that scheduled It's Great to Be Alive as a service to the people of South Dakota and many other states as well? In addition, all these stations ran thousands of 30-second public service announcements to raise the level of understanding. As our expanding understanding plan unfolded, we also developed an employee assistance program. This program was designed for businesses of all kinds to combat the disease of alcoholism that was so costly in lost time and lost talents. River Park became the source for training supervisory personnel so they could recognize the symptoms. And in many cases, people from River Park and its alumni even assisted in the interventions that led to personal recognition and acceptance of the disease 
and then to successful treatment. For this historic record, we are including examples from our Expanding Understanding Awareness Crusade. Our efforts included newsletters, hundreds of feature stories for the state's newspapers, radio interviews, and thousands of radio spots, speaking engagements, printed materials, and even booklets. It included almost every avenue of communication, including a well-received slide and tape presentation that was shown to hundreds of civic clubs, schools, church groups, and everyone else that was interested. Let's take a look at that right now. And afterwards, we'll see a special montage sampling from River Park's It's Great to be Alive television programs.